Did you know fucker is a gender neutral term? I don't see what would be gendered about it. That's right. So it's politically correct. What's up, fuckers? Welcome to Arts and Crafts with Mike. We are going to be going over a number of different ways to customize your MDV and your uh, MDV flat sheath and rhino sheath. Um, as you can see, I have all sorts of crap in front of me. Um, I have a very large mug of coffee and I have my notes, so I think we're good to go. Uh, the first part of this is I will just introduce why you need to customize your MDV, why that's part of the um, design. I kind of did that, obviously, in the design chapter. Uh, and then I wanted to go over the taping. I have different um, brands of tape here. I also have some new ways to do this if you didn't like that first video. But we did do a fairly long video on how to tape the MDV on YouTube. If you haven't watched that, go watch that uh, because I'm not gonna show that version. Uh, I'm just gonna bypass that, probably just review it real quick. Basically, why do you need to customize MDV? Well, it's part of the design feature. Uh, you have the trainer and the actual MDV, right? And so what happens is it comes bare like this and you can carry this around. Most people that carry the Damascus version tend to do this because it's all pretty and stuff. And, um, you know, if you kill somebody with this, they should be honored because of how beautiful the blade is. But if you are worried about blood getting on this or your sweat uh, making this difficult for you to hold on to, then you're going to want to customize it. The way that you customize it uh, through the tape, uh, and there's some other ways to do that. Like I've seen people wrap this in a similar fashion of how you would see like the um, uh, handle of a sword uh, wrapped. I'm not going to do that because I don't do that very well. I know a few people that do, and they will do a video on it uh, here soon. But the thing is, is that if you're going to do this, you want to make sure that you think about the purpose of the knife that you're carrying. Okay, And what I mean by that is what kind of damage, what type of grips do you actually like to use? And you know, what are the areas that you're going to want to increase in width and where everything works in before. Uh, in my previous wrapping video, I did something similar to this, where I measured out where my two fingers were, and then I marked it, and then I started to tape. These are using grommets. I'm gonna show you how to do this in a second. But the thing is, is that the reason for that is the majority of people will be gripping like that and they will be using the ice pick grip and the hammer grip. And these are areas that make it very easy to do a bunch of different grips. It's kind of like a universal thing. Um, there may be a reason why you wouldn't want something as generic as this. Uh, let's take a look at this monstrosity right here. This thing right here has a pad on the uh, horn. I did this specifically because of the amount of people, uh, specifically from knife fighting arts, that kept saying that this would be an owie when they stab people in the face. So, you know, um, you can go about trying to grind that down, which I wouldn't advise, or you can try to create some sort of padding here with the tape. Now, you'll also notice that there's this big fat piece right in the middle. The reason for that is that I found that if you are just trying to stab or you have grips where you're looking for extension, this is a lot easier for you to grab onto and have some sort of press. I'm basically making a smaller uh, uh, finger guard that I can press into or thumb ramp. Right. So that's basically the same kind of concept of if I'm grabbing here, then I just drive this down. I'm using two fingers for this. And so what happens is when I draw, I can drive into them. Uh, it does make it easier to flip the blade around. Makes it real cool looking, what have you. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this. I used uh, 
some tape to bulk it up and then I use the actual monkey tape. So this first video or this first section that I want to get into uh, is going to talk about all the variations of taping. Okay, and the bit, uh, the different options that you can use as far as brands, I'm going to tape with the two most popular brands that have come up, and then I'm going to give my opinions on them. And so we'll just move from there. So I'm going to rearrange some shit here, and then we'll get into that. So. All right, let's talk about taping the MDV. Uh, I already have a YouTube video on this. Uh, that's probably like the third time I've said that. Um, we have a section that we will probably throw a number of the YouTube videos on. So if you don't want to go hunt that down, then you can watch them. Uh, so what did I actually cover on that? Basically, the preferred method, if you wanted to have uh, better grip manipulation through the handle, I talked about why we do the customization. How did I do that? Basically, what I did was I took um, my finger, locked it in, then I would uh, mark it with a marker. And then I would do the same thing on the other side, right? And so you would create these two marks and then I would tape them uh, building height and then in turn trying to secure it. Now, I'm not going to go over that again, mainly because once again, you can watch that video. Uh, it would kind of be redundant. The thing is, is that over the last year or so, I've had a number of people talk to me about, well, why don't you use this tape and that tape? You know, um, Canadians, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I am specifically talking about one comment. So uh, uh, one guy was like, I'm a Canadian. and Why don't you use skater tape uh, and that type of thing? And so the purpose of not using, say, skater tape, in my opinion, this, this is just me, is that I have it usually behind my belt buckle or I'll have it, uh, say it on my, uh, belt outside the waistband, uh, here. And so let's say if I have my knife, my blue knife here, and this was all sticky. Okay. To the point where, uh, it, it creates good traction, right? So like I'm, I'm actually locked in to that. Anytime my shirt starts to move on it, it's going to get caught. So it becomes more difficult to pull. So some of you have complained about like the hook catching your shirt. Not only are you going to have to worry about that, but depending on how fresh that tape is, because uh, I don't really know if skater tape like rubs off. Uh, but the thing is, is that it's going to catch, right? If it's in your pocket in a fashion where you have a rhino sheath, Right. So you already have a little bit of grip on the sheath. That makes sense to me because when I actually draw this out, I want the sheath to have a couple different ways to stay in the pocket. Not only is it my actual drawing method, but what happens is because this is going to catch the material of the pocket, the front and back side, it's going to probably stay inside the pocket and if it does leave it will drag a little bit and hopefully stay there through that mo uh, through the movement if i have skater tape around here and my knife is actually all the way in my pocket what may happen is if i have anything else in the pocket at that time when i draw that out there's a tendency uh to pull that out. So uh, whether that just be paper receipts, uh, business cards, what have you, um, you get into the, well, why do you have anything in your pocket uh, with your knife? Well, the thing is I carry multiple knives most of the times. And so if I could only have a knife in that pocket and not have anything else in there, then what would happen is I'd only be carrying knives, um, which is not a bad thing. I wouldn't judge you. That's the way that works. So as far as skater tape goes, if you are fine with that, then obviously use it. It's going to create more grip than my options. My purpose of this is to create a temporary handle um, and a wider points of grip. So what happens is my fingers can wrap directly around that. I can use them to uh, control. And so the thing is, is that that's my mascot. Um, so the thing is, is that when I do this, 
it's a lot easier for me to manipulate. I believe that the tape that I'm using is a lot easier to grip when it gets wet. Uh, I've tested that before, and so it's smooth, but through cutting soft tissue, blood getting directly on there, uh, sweat and that type of thing, I can still manipulate it well. And so there are two other tapes that kind of came to the forefront in the conversations. Uh, so obviously I recommend uh, monkey tape. I don't get any kickback on any of this. Um, I'm a horrible businessman. So the thing is, is that um, I just use the products I like. And so I use monkey tape. The reason I do that is it's smooth to start off. And because for whatever reason, it, it, um, it creates this uh, smoother effect. It's really weird. Like the tape actually it, uh, locks into themselves. And as I work it more and my sweat, you know, works on top of it, it actually like almost concretes into that. So like I can't actually find where I ended that tape here. I found with other tapes, when I use it, at some point they start to rub and they start to move. And what happens is, uh, you know, the tape starts to fall off and shit. Um, this basically stays the way it is the entire time. Uh, that's probably not how it was designed. Monkey tape is supposed to be grappler's tape. Okay, so you're supposed to uh, put this on on your joints. If you grapple a lot, you'll get these guys. They'll spend like an hour before class, like prettying up their fingers and shit uh, while they're doing that. And then you're supposed to take that off afterwards. So it's not supposed to be an extended use type thing, even though I use it for that. Um, the other one is goon tape. So this is goon tape. When you order it, uh, at least the batch that I ordered, it comes with three different colors. So that's cool. It's very smooth. Um, it reminds me of medical tape. This is black medical tape. So as far as uh, both of them uh, go, this one's a lot smoother. So I placed medical tape on this and it works, but you'll start to see that this kind of flares out as I'm using it. I haven't really used this that much. Uh, I think that you're going to have to replace it more often. It's you know, in, in the middle of its first test. So what have you, I do like the fact that it doesn't grip. So it does fall into that requirement of why I like this stuff. I will tell you that this stuff runs out really quickly. Um, it's why I use medical tape to supplement, uh, for any area. So like I'll build up an area so that I can then close it off with the monkey tape just because uh one they seem to be out of stock often and uh two i run out of it pretty quickly because i do different ones all right so as far as uh the the two main brands you're going to have goon tape um and to do that and you are going to have monkey tape okay so let's talk about actually doing this i have an old MDV trainer, which is red, and then the blue ones are here. And you'll notice that if I pull this up together uh, here, this one tends to be just a little bit shorter than this one. This one tends to be a little bit more pointy. Um, I actually have to get really close to figure that one out. But the thing is, is that uh, this one will stab into things more. So the blue ones will be a little bit better for training. So I'm going to upgrade one of these into this fat thing. All right. Uh, big bones. Sorry, not fat. Uh, so what happens is we're going to be here. I'm going to use one of these to tape. Uh, and then, you know, we'll kind of see how that works. One option is using grommets, okay? Um, once again, I don't care about the company. Uh, I just knew that I had to use grommets to kind of test that out. That's kind of what this is. So um, I went on Amazon, bought a whole crap ton of them so that I could figure out exactly uh, what size I'm looking for to do that. Um, I believe it's seven sixteenths that, uh, I'll use. So it's, it's here. 
Maybe is that right? Is that right? I don't know. We'll see. Is it fat enough? No. Ooh, ooh. Come on. This is horrible. Ah, there we go. All right. So I was correct. One and two. Man. Ah, some grip strength for that one. Some of you may not be able to do this. Just kidding. All right, so uh, we're here. The reason I like the grommets, the idea of using them is because I can kind of set where I am going. So I said before, if I was just doing like knife in the eye stuff, um, you know, poking somebody here, I might want to go center mass on this. I will show how to do that, uh, say with the blue one. If you want to do the traditional way where it's just um, basically, you know, universal, um, what will happen is I would just move that and then you can test this out as we're here. And because of how tight that grommet is, it would give me the idea of what it's like working. The one thing I would test is if you're going to have the flat sheath on it, you need to make sure that this is far enough back that it's not going to catch. I'm not saying this to uh, insult anyone. I have uh, taped a number of times and then realized that I couldn't actually sink that in, right? So now this is my test. I'm going here. Obviously, the uh, rhino sheath goes up to the finger guard, so you don't really have to worry about that. So if you want to get this closer and use the rhino sheath, then that works obviously there. So just some lessons learned because sometimes I'm a dumbass. So we're here. This is where I want to lock this in. Let's um, use this. So we use it on that one. Same situation. I'm going to try to X this, okay, uh, to secure exactly where it's at. I wrap this around a few times like this. Then I'll go down and exit in the other direction. And then I'll just continue to do this uh, until it is roughly as thick as uh, I want it. Take that however you want. All right. So uh, one of the things about this monkey tape, just rub that shit down. Make sure that it's in there and it'll look like something like that, right? So that's a good piece, good placement, works out. It's roughly about the same thing that I usually do there. All right. And now we will go in the other side. Uh, you will notice that with this one, uh, I have kind of canted it forward. There's a little bit of an angle to this, right? So it's there. It's not straight up and down. I like that one. I did that on that, and I found that it's uh, similar to a thumb ramp. So keep that at that angle. Test it out. If you get enough of this tape, you can do a number of different options. See what you like. I do apologize. I am uh, All of my creativity usually goes to how to um, hurt people. So I'm not very artistic. If there's a better way to do this, then um, I'm not the guy that's actually gonna show you how to do it. All right, so this is the final product. This is uh, what it looks like. And like I said, what I like about the monkey tape is after I've used it a bunch of times, it um, turns into this type of stuff and it's very hard to remove. Uh, usually I have to take a sharp knife and actually cut through it a couple of times. Uh, to even pull this out, but it creates a semi-permanent type grip. And I've had people um, have the same tape job that I have sent to them uh, for the entirety of the time that they had the knife, uh, some, some guys over two years, right? So I think that is good for, you know, um, talking about just using the tape once, right? So that's there. That is how I traditionally did it, but now I'm using grommets. Grommets will just, 
is another way of the marking. And I don't have to tape the same place 10 times in a row. It just saves this, especially if you are going to, um, you know, do one, test it out, see how this kind of works out, stab a few things, get shit on it and be like, okay, I want to, I like that or I don't like that. And then I'm going to try something else. Right. So that's there. Black always goes well with red. I like that. Um, as far as the medical tape, uh, same kind of situation. Uh, let's talk about center. I want to grab this, but what happens is I want it to be in the center. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out basically where that halfway point is, and I'm going to take medical tape and do this. Uh, you can use obviously any color because you're going to be covering it with a secondary tape, whether that be goon tape or monkey tape. Um, and so I use black because I like black. Um, and the idea of this is you're just looking to gain width on it. Just start it, and because uh, medical tape is fairly cheap in comparison, it'll work. This stuff is not as hard to rip. Uh, so I'm here, that works. I'm like, okay, can I draw that out? If I wanted to punch that, it'll be good right there. All right, we're here, okay. Uh, break your finger, that type of thing. Yep. All right. I like that. All right. So that's center. That works out. You can make that thicker. You can make it wider. Uh, that's up to you. Let's use some goon tape for this. Goon tape usually comes like that. So I don't need the full width of this. Uh, you know, pro to goon tape is the fact that you will probably have this for quite a while, uh, no matter how many times that you are taping it. That's thicker than normal, but whatever. So we're going to go cross here. Same kind of concept. Cross. Creating that X. And then rip that off. As you can see, I don't need my teeth for this one. I don't really know if that's good or bad. Now, you got this big fat lump in the middle, um, just like that. So we're here, and uh, that's goon tape. And it's soft, it's grippy enough, and I can then take my sheath, and that's obviously enough. That'll work out, and I can punch somebody in the face with it. I can use it like this if I want to play Wolverine, stab somebody. Um, thing is, is that this creates a push, right? So if you want to like stab somebody into the clavicle, behind the clavicle, hit the subclavian artery, and then drive up to that knot and just drive it all the way through just so that you make sure that you hit the top of the heart and route that out like a pumpkin, you can do so. That is a great way to do that. So you are creating that. Um, this finger stop is not going to stop that from actually pounding all the way through as you try to bury it and hook this over the clavicle. That'd probably be a cool picture. All right. So that is how I would tape uh, that uh, using goon tape, but I am using medical tape to kind of help that out. So uh, I wanted to just go over that again, give a couple of different options, talk about the differences between this uh, and that. So the goon tape and the uh, monkey tape. And so let's see, what else do I want to do? Yeah, that's basically all of that shit. So I hope you enjoyed that. We are going to talk next about customizing our sheaths uh, and repairing the rhino sheath if you actually cut through uh, the ranger bands. So if you have any questions and obviously shoot them to us, uh, remember content at eliteu.com is our email for any requested videos, what have you. Um, and I will try my best to answer you. All right, so let's move on to the next video, which is going to be uh, repairing the rhino sheath. 
we are going to talk about the rhino sheath. Um, while it's still fresh in my mind, if you have purchased a couple of these rhino sheaths and you're working on uh, just the training aspect of it, right? So you have a trainer that you're placing in here. The, the fact that this is not um, sharp, okay, so here, it's a little bit thicker than an actual MDV. And so to get the same kind of retention that you would get uh, on, you know, one that has ranger bands. So you'll notice that I use that one for training, but I had to move the ranger bands down. Uh, normally I have it around the top here. Okay. And that creates a good clamp on that opening. What I do for training is I usually just have one that doesn't have the ranger bands on it because when I compared the two, that is basically the same kind of resistance that I wanted for the actual MDV. The actual MDV, if you're, you're going to be using it, you want to have the ranger bands on them or some sort of flexible um, clamp on it so that it will tighten down on the actual metal of the MDV. And then when you pull, it will kind of flex a little bit. So like when it inserts, it will flex a little bit up, but when you pull, it will have the same kind of retention as this. So once again, this is thicker, so that's why it allows that to work. So if you have two Rhino sheaths and you have your trainer, then one Rhino sheath should be dedicated to your trainer. And then obviously one would be dedicated to your actual carry. All right. Now what happens is people will not spend enough reps or time on learning how to actually insert that uh, securely. And what will happen is they will start to go here and then they'll just like slam that forward. And if this was a real MDV, it will cut the Ranger bands. And so we get emails on, oh, I cut my Ranger bands. What can I actually uh, repair that with? Yes, you can buy extra Ranger bands online. Go on Amazon, find them. They're just they are actually a specific type of rubber band. Industrial rubber bands may work. Uh, I've seen some guys just use that. Uh, but I wanted to offer an option. If you cut this and you want to carry your MDV around, maybe in transit for the, for the rubber band, uh, uh, the Ranger bands, or you wanted just a different option, you know, um, because, uh, you may wear out that those bands more often, whatever the reason, let's talk about it. So I have found that, uh, a common item in most people's houses, uh, just in their toolkit is, um, electrical tape. So electrical tape can flex. And so the reason that this is a good replacement is you can wrap this fairly tight and then place that in and uh, even if you do have some extra Ranger bands, you can place that on top of that, and then it's just a good replacement. You don't have to worry about um, it being too taut, like it, it locking in. If you use something else like duct tape or um, even uh, medical tape, I found tends to be too tight. It locks it in place, and then what happens is it won't flex. And when you have to push with your thumb, you're not actually going to be able to uh, unsheath that. So it's not so much about full retention of the blade. The It's about making sure that you can actually draw it when you need to. And so I would pull this here. If I was using it for, say, um, this, I would want to make sure that, okay, that's, that's a little looser than I want. And so I put the knife in, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to place this here. Okay. And you don't need a lot of it, just probably um, enough to connect, right? And then just stretch until it breaks, right? So you can cut it and then do that, but I've just found that when I stretch it out, it just, it, it lasts a little bit longer. The one thing about this is because it is slick, uh, it's not going to have the same kind of grip in your pocket as Ranger Bands. So like I said, um, 
I can do that to get that out. I can go here. And so it's just a good replacement. I would, I would actually carry this if uh, I wanted another option. You can use the Ranger Band to go around or uh, you can uh, secure this and probably find some sort of other texture uh, that goes on top. And so that's a, that's a way to fix your rhino sheath if you cut your ranger bands or they uh, snap for whatever reason of overuse. Obviously, they're not going to last forever. But I wanted to cover that in the customization uh, of the MDV because we do get questions on it. Uh, and sometimes we are out of ranger bands and people don't know where to, to look, right? And so remember, ranger bands are different than rubber bands. Um, they hold in place a little bit more. Um, I just prefer them. We will eventually create a sheath that you won't need that for, but in order for us to create a unique uh, uh, sheath to go with the MDV, this was the product that we put together. And so just like customization of the handle, I didn't feel like it was a big deal to just have customization of the sheath. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. The next one that we're going to be talking about uh, in this little series is how do I take the flat sheath and then take soft loops, uh, soft belt loops, and then put them on so that you can have an IWB version or uh, an OWB version, okay? Because even though I advocate for people to um, go on Amazon and purchase that or wherever you're going to do that, uh, people will be confused about how to actually attach that. So uh, let's get into that video next. All right, so let's uh, talk about taking the flat sheath. Once again, I usually advocate if you're not going to have it on your belt, then, you know, just have no attachment to it. You can use the scallywag attachments or um, you can go online and purchase these soft loops. Um, once again, I am not advocating for a specific maker or brand, but if you just want to know what I have in my hand here, this is uh, holsterbuilder.com. I know that they have a bunch of different colors, so if you're into that shit, you get different colors. Um, but I think this was like 12 bucks. Uh, Amazon Prime works out really, really well. So let's open this up. I'm going to show you this version and then this version. This is the one that I carry all the time. I have a 1.5 inch uh, belt that is a gun belt. Um, and so once again, I always advocate that you should have a gun belt. All right. Uh, you should have something that is designed uh, for load bearing of a concealed weapon. So if you are still carrying one of these knives or your concealed carry pistol, for that matter, uh, with a Walmart brand belt, you are going to have a hard time. Just it stretches, just not designed for that. Uh, I don't know what they are designed for outside of just keeping your pants up, but if you have to carry a weapon, you want something that is going to be rigid enough that your draws, everything that everything that you do with your weapon is going to be consistent. Um, and that usually means that you need some sort of kydex or harder material that doesn't warp over time to be embedded inside of the belt. Uh, there are a number of companies that do that. So look into it. Uh, you are talking about items that are supposed to save your life. And so, yes, you will find that they are anywhere between 50 and $75, uh, depending on what brand you're talking about. But it is to save your life. So how much is your life worth? I don't know. Some of you, it's $10 at Walmart. All right. So we're going here. I'm going to open this up. Don't get mad at me. I know. Even a $10 life is, is valuable. All right. So uh, what happens is we are going to talk about uh, what I usually do for this is uh, when I wrap this around. So let's do this one first. Right. So this is here. You can 
have it where the button is on the back. I just found that for me, it's easier to uh, have it in the front. And what I do is I wrap this under my belt. So say this is my belt. I wrap this under my belt and then I go here. Okay. I don't do it where this is behind and locked in. You can, because you can angle it like this, but what happens is I find that it gets caught a little bit and I'm afraid it's just gonna cut into my belt a lot. So that's what this version would be for. So what you're gonna want is you want enough clearance that a 1.5 inch belt can get in there. Uh, it obviously has to be thinner. There are some leather companies that claim to do good concealed uh, pistol belts, but you'll find that if they don't put Kydex inside of it, it is just really thick leather. Um, and so that may not be capable of wrapping on this. You might have to use that bottom hole. So because I have a thinner belt, um, I use the middle uh, to do that. Okay, so that's why this is all manipulated here, okay? So, uh, handy dandy little uh, Chapman thing here. Um, these things are awesome. I've had this thing for like 10 years. Uh, this is number 6810. Has all of these cool things in it. Uh, we will only need, yeah. My eyes are so bad, Jesus. All right, so uh, <laughs> I need to go here. That's how that is going to work in. And then also this will wrap like that. So that attaches. Also the cool thing about these is um, it's one of those pull the dot versions. So it doesn't unclasp uh, just with pressure. What happens is you're going to have to push this in and pull up because there's a catch on the bottom of this here. So it just, you have to actually uh, have a um, manual movement to pop this. It's not gonna pop off of your belt that way. So just like all of our other things, I will go through the painstaking task of going through all of this. We can have some cool music going right now. It also talk to you about my childhood. Uh, Josh wants me to have a YouTube channel where it's story time with Mike and I just talk about my fucked up childhood. I, I just think that you could go to a library and set up like a reading. He like, wants me to do it in front of children. Not it, but you know, like story time, you know? So the thing is that I think it's a fucking horrible idea. You know how bad my childhood was to where it scarred me? I think they Jesus. were more grateful. The many lives that were lost in the transition of creating the psycho asshole that's in front of you. All right, so we're here. I have uh, completed that with that great conversation. And what happens is that will lock in. So once again, it doesn't, it doesn't come undone with pressure. Um, I am going to have to press that down and then pull up like that. It's weird, it says, oh yeah, pull the dot. All right, so we're here. Uh, you can cut this off if you want to. This is pretty rigid. Uh, I have found that this brand doesn't stretch. There are some versions of this that this is nothing but rubber. Uh, it looks like there's cloth in it, like embedded in, or maybe it's a different kind of rubber. But the thing is, is that over time, it has not actually stretched out. I have used some in the past, especially for concealed uh, pistol, where they stretch. Uh, same problem with Walmart belts, right? So you might have to test that out. Uh, this brand obviously has that. Just make sure that uh, if you have something and you start pulling on, you're like, okay, that's gonna stretch out. You look at your gear every now and then. So that's here. Uh, let's talk about this. This is an IWB version. Uh, this and pull most of this off of concealed pistol stuff that I've seen over the years and used, all right? So same concept. I am using the middle uh, hole here. It's going to be on this top grommet uh, right here. And the 
this bottom grommet here, just be very careful how you like clamp onto that. It will tighten up the sheath itself. So sometimes people will put spacers in here and what'll happen is they'll like really crank on this. And then what happens is you can't actually pull the, the knife out. Um, and yes, I do get emails on why that happens. And then I have to explain, well, you, you locked your knife in there. Uh, so I like this top one for the IWB. It's going to go inside of your pants uh, or pants or whatever that is. This is going to go behind the belt and in front. So if the be uh, belt is here, uh, you go into the pants. This is going to go here. And then this locks like that. Okay. Okay find the hole. All right. So we're here. And then what happens is that should be how that works. It conceals the knife a little bit more. I don't know how much you need to conceal the knife, especially if you're wearing uh, a shirt that can drape over the top of it. Uh, some of you guys like to tuck in your shirts in a professional environment. Uh, that makes sense in a non-professional environment. Uh, I'm not going to talk about style, but whatever. So we're here. This is going directly underneath and locking. So how do I do that with this? Um, once again, I have this here. Middle hole is going there. I'm driving this in front. So we can talk more about my childhood um, and talking to children. Why would I be talking to children? Is that just so you can scar them? It's like a scared straight program. Adults hate hearing my whole, my childhood stories. They go, you poor thing. Oh. I think you and frame my... it as fiction. And then they're like a little more okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. I've had three shrinks. And most of my shrinks stop actually doing their job. And then they're like, this guy is fascinating. And then they start asking me questions. And I know that has nothing to do with my psychological well-being. And so I just start telling them the most fucked up stories. And they're like, how are you not a serial killer? And I'm like, how do you know I'm not a serial killer? All right, so <laughs> we're here and we're locking this in. This is one and two. Remember, you, you purchased this. All right, so... <clears throat> Unless this is on YouTube, in which case I might get canceled. So that's how you do that. I really like those designs. Uh, I use this one all the time. This is how I work that. And the other thing that I'll do is uh, if I put a pistol on and I don't want to carry just a flat sheath without anything on, um, it is still thin enough that I can throw that in my pocket and pocket carry this uh, as is. Um, so it would sit like that. And because of that, it creates a very good push. So like I said, some of you are going to look at this video and be like, well, fuck, that's fucking easy. I, I know how to do that. And it's like, well, of course you do. But there are people that are going to ask how exactly this works. And that's what this video is for. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, and that concludes our customization kind of uh, section of videos. Uh, there really is a number of ways I could just add a lot more stuff, but I just feel like these are the most important things. Uh, your knife should be customized to you. You should feel like that is a personalized knife of yours. You put your thought into it. You put um, time into it. The more time that you have your hands on this uh, weapon uh, or tool or whatever you want to call that, the more comfortable you're going to be with it. The more comfortable you are with it, the more likely that you are going to not only uh, use it in a life and death situation or violence scenario, but you will have enough time in that you will actually use it efficiently. Okay. And so it is uh, one of the concepts of cleaning your pistol all the time. Uh, sometimes uh, during uh, shooting classes, people have asked me in the past, like, do you actually have to clean your pistol every single time you go to the range? Uh, I know this is going to shock people, but uh, I've trained with some of the best in the world. And the thing is, is that it is really, really rare that you'll see people cleaning their pistol after range day. Um, so if you have a good, reliable pistol, you're probably going to be uh, cleaning it every so often. The reason that you take somebody that's brand new and you tell them to clean it all the time is they get used to that pistol. It's in their hands or breaking it apart. Okay. They're just adding time, comfortability. Uh, they're no longer going to be afraid of that because of just 
they're hands-on. It's the same thing with this. That was part of the design. I wanted to make sure that I forced you to do that in some fashion. Some people like that, some people don't. Um, but I have found that the more often that you have this in your hand and you're, you're doing whatever, whether you're drawing or you're taping this up or finding whatever it is, you're putting conscious thought into it, uh, the more attached you are to the blade because that is how much investment you put into it. Not only money, but time. And time is that one resource that we cannot get back. Okay, so hope you enjoy the videos. I will see you in the next one.